Hello, hot video order stuff. Welcome back, my friends. Today for you, I'm going to explore the techniques involved in lighting a scene for high key. I'll show you how I started with this and ended up with this. I've already done videos on low key lighting, interview style lighting, so I thought it high time I tackled high key. And it's seriously not as easy as you might think, but whoo, I had fun making this for you. Let's do it. Unlike Loki, which has lots of contrast and most importantly, the majority of the scene is nice and dark, High Key, unsurprisingly, is the opposite with relatively low contrast and the majority of the scene is bright. The reason it's not gonna be particularly easy is because we'll need to light our subject and the background independently and the skill will be in making sure our subject's face is evenly lit, evenly lit in a flattering way, and then making sure that we've got a good balanced exposure across the whole frame. It's a four light setup, and for this arrangement, diffusion is the key. This isn't what I'd call a low budget setup because of the four lights, but I'd say that as long as the two key lights pointing directly towards your subject are decent quality, the ones behind your subject can be cheap. The background you choose, of course, is up to you. In this case, I've gone for a classic white background. So here's what I started with, with just the house lights on, and I know what you're thinking, it looks terrible. I know it does. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get the house lights off and get the main key light on, which I've got positioned just off camera left. Straight away, it's a huge improvement, obviously. For this light, I'm using an Aperture C300 and a large light dome. The C300's doing a beautiful job of lighting half of her face, but of course we need another light with equal power to light her face evenly. So I'm going to keep the C300's power relatively low, and then I'm gonna bring in my Aperture LS Mini 20D Spotlight with a big umbrella. And there we have it with the C300 low and the LS Mini 20D up high. We've got a nice balanced exposure across her face and very few shadows. Next, we're gonna think about lighting our background. And you can do it either way. You can either light your subject first and then do your background or the other way around. To light the background, I'm going to use Aperture LED panels with their Easy Frost Diffusion. So it's an all Aperture setup. That's fine by me, and no, this video is not sponsored by Aperture. Here we can see I've turned the first one on and it's already made a huge difference in getting a step closer to that high key look. I've got both of the lights positioned just off camera left and camera right at about chest height. I then turned on the second of my two background lights, and when I did, I actually found that for me, the background wasn't exposed brightly enough. So I adjusted the power of my two key lights and I ended up with this. Of course, in this case, I would say that our subject is slightly underexposed, but remember, we're looking for balance rather than anything else. So all I needed to do was just bump my exposure a little bit. I opened up my aperture and then I ended up with this, which I know on first glance maybe looks just a tiny bit overexposed, but remember we want that kind of super bright looking, high key look, and I am gonna be adding some color and contrast. So let's do that now, and all I'm gonna do is use the color wheels function in Final Cut Pro, and I'm not gonna use any kind of lookup tables. It'll just be simply a little bit of correction, a little bit of saturation and I'll probably bring the shadows down just a tiny bit. And there we have it, that is a good looking high key look if I do say so myself. We've got her face evenly lit and the background's nice and bright and that looks great to me. But of course then I got wondering how I could improve it if I used log, because you know I love using log. So I shot this in S-Log3 and as always this is non-essential, you don't need to do this. I just thought it'd be fun to try it. We are overexposed as we should be in S-Log3 and then I added color wheels, curves and a LUT for a way more stylized look. And I'm really glad I did this because I actually prefer this look to the original one I had. So there we have it, the high key look from this look to this look. And with only four lights, it is more tricky than some setups, but I'm sure you can nail it, you just gotta try it and it's all about balance, that's the thing to remember. And that's it for now, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. As always, I've loved making this video for you, and if you're still in the mood for more dope videos about video, I'll pop a couple of interesting ones just here for you. And if you're not subscribed, just hit this blob right here. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you next time.